Ever wonder why you keep putting off tasks even when you know they're important? Procrastination is a peculiar beast, isn't it? It's this invisible force that pulls us towards seemingly unimportant tasks while the important ones loom large, unattended. We all tend to think of it as our personal failing, our Achilles heel. But let's get something straight. Procrastination is a common problem, shared by many, not an individual failing. Now let's dive a bit deeper into the psychology behind procrastination. You see, our brains are wired to prioritize immediate gratification over long-term rewards. This is known as the present bias. So when faced with a task that doesn't offer immediate rewards, we tend to put it off, favoring tasks that offer instant satisfaction instead. This is the paradox of procrastination. But here's the good news. Procrastination is not a character flaw, it's a habit. And like all habits, it can be unlearned and replaced with more productive behaviors. It's not about trying to eliminate procrastination entirely, but rather understanding why it happens and learning to manage it effectively. Think of it as a journey towards a more productive you. It's not going to be an easy journey, there will be setbacks and hurdles, but every step you take towards overcoming procrastination, no matter how small, is a victory. It's about learning to work with your brain, not against it. Remember, nobody's perfect. Even the most successful people have days where they struggle with procrastination. The key lies in not letting it control your life. It's about taking the wheel back from procrastination and steering your life in the direction you want. So, no matter how deep you're stuck in the procrastination quicksand, there's always a way out. It might require some effort, some introspection, and a lot of patience, but trust me, it's worth it. Because at the end of the day, procrastination is not a life sentence. With the right tools and mindset, you can break free from this cycle. Identifying why you procrastinate is the first step to overcoming it. We all have our unique triggers, those sneaky culprits that lead us into the time-sapping trap of procrastination. Some of us may procrastinate due to a fear of failure. The idea that we might not succeed can be so daunting that we'd rather not try at all. Or perhaps perfectionism is your trigger. The desire to do everything flawlessly can be so overwhelming that it stops you from starting in the first place. And let's not forget about lack of motivation, which can make even the smallest tasks seem like Herculean feats. Identifying these triggers is not about self-blame but rather about gaining insight. It's about understanding the why behind the what. So take a moment to reflect. What causes you to procrastinate? Once you understand your triggers, you can start to build strategies to overcome them. Now that you know your triggers, let's explore some effective techniques to overcome procrastination. First off, let's start by breaking down tasks into manageable chunks. This technique is often referred to as chunking. It can seem daunting when you have a big project or a long list of tasks, but when we break these tasks down into smaller manageable parts, it becomes less overwhelming. Think of it as climbing a mountain. You wouldn't try to leap to the top in one bound, you would take it one step at a time. Chunking works in the same way. Each small task you complete is a step closer to your goal. The second technique involves using time management tools. In this digital age, we're fortunate to have a plethora of tools at our fingertips. Tools like digital calendars, to-do lists, and productivity apps can help you stay on track. You can schedule your tasks, set reminders, and even block distracting websites. These tools act as your personal assistant, keeping you accountable and focused. Now, let's talk about the Pomodoro technique. This time management method involves breaking your work into 25-minute intervals, separated by short breaks. These intervals are known as Pomodoros. After every fourth Pomodoro, you take a longer break. This technique helps maintain your concentration and staves off fatigue. It also provides a sense of urgency that can spur you into action. Next, we have the two-minute rule. If a task takes two minutes or less to complete, do it immediately. It's surprising how many tasks we put off that can be done in two minutes or less. By following this rule, you can significantly reduce your to-do list and prevent small tasks from piling up. Now let's move on to rewards. Rewarding yourself for completed tasks is a powerful motivator. The reward can be anything that you find enjoyable. It could be a cup of your favorite coffee, a short walk, or even a few minutes on a fun app. The anticipation of the reward can spur you into action and make the task more enjoyable. Finally, visualizing your success can be a powerful tool. Imagine how you'll feel when the task is completed. Visualize the sense of accomplishment and relief. This mental image can serve as a powerful motivator, pushing you to start and complete the task. And there you have it. A handful of practical techniques to overcome procrastination. But remember, these techniques are not one-size-fits-all. 
experiment with them, tweak them to fit your lifestyle and see what works best for you. Remember the key is consistency. Choose a technique that works for you and stick with it. Increasing productivity is not just about doing more. It's about doing the right things at the right time. It's about working smarter, not harder. So how can we boost our productivity? Let's explore a few techniques. First, let's talk about prioritizing tasks. Not all tasks are created equal. Some have more impact on our goals than others. By understanding what tasks are critical and which ones can wait, we can better manage our time and energy. A useful tool to help prioritize tasks is the Eisenhower box. It's a simple matrix that separates tasks into four categories. Urgent and important. Important, but not urgent. Urgent, but not important. And neither urgent, nor important. Spend your time on the tasks that are both urgent and important, and plan to do the important but not urgent tasks later. Next, let's deal with distractions. In our hyper-connected world distractions are everywhere. Emails, social media, instant messages. These little interruptions can add up, significantly reducing our productivity. The key to handling distractions is to set boundaries. Allocate specific times for checking emails or social media and stick to it. Use tools that block distracting websites or set your phone to do not disturb mode during your focused work time. Lastly, set realistic goals. Setting goals that are too ambitious can lead to frustration and ultimately procrastination. Instead, break down your goals into smaller, manageable tasks. Use the SMART method. Make sure your goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This way you'll have a clear direction, know when you've reached your goal, and avoid feeling overwhelmed. Remember, boosting productivity is a journey, not a destination. It requires constant refinement and adjustment. But with these techniques, you're well on your way to becoming more productive. To paraphrase Peter Drucker, a well-known management consultant, efficiency is doing things right, productivity is doing the right things. So let's focus on doing the right things at the right time, in the right way. Let's boost our productivity. Overcoming procrastination and increasing productivity is a journey, not a destination. We've spent the past several minutes exploring this journey, shedding light on the paradox of procrastination, understanding its triggers, and discussing practical techniques to conquer it. We began our journey by recognizing the paradox of procrastination. We acknowledge that it's an internal conflict where we're at war with our future selves. It's a battle between the present self, who wants immediate gratification, and the future self, who seeks long-term success. This understanding is the first step on our path to overcoming procrastination. We then delved into the triggers of procrastination. These triggers are unique to each of us yet they often revolve around fear, of failure, of success, or even of the unknown. By identifying these triggers we empower ourselves to proactively address them, thus paving the way to a more productive future. Our journey then led us to practical techniques to overcome procrastination, we discussed various strategies from breaking tasks into manageable parts to using time management tools and practicing mindfulness. These techniques serve as our weapons in the battle against procrastination, helping us to take control of our time and our tasks. Finally, we explored how overcoming procrastination can boost productivity. We highlighted the undeniable correlation between proactive behavior and increased productivity. We emphasized how productivity isn't just about doing more, it's about achieving more. It's about finding satisfaction in our work and reducing stress in our lives. Now, it's time to put what we've learned into action. Remember, overcoming procrastination and increasing productivity is a journey. And like all journeys, it begins with a single step. Start your journey today. Identify your triggers, implement practical techniques and watch your productivity soar. Remember the only thing standing between you and your goals is action.